Hi, this is Christine of Girl Traveler. Today I'm gonna to share with you some of the best things to do when you are in Kyoto. Wow, those are really high. Look at those shoes. for free walking tours of the city just so I can get bearings get a little more insight into what I'm seeing in terms of the neighborhoods and I found online a free walking tour of Kyoto and it'll be in the Gion area which is of course what everyone's fascinated about like the geisha and the maiko culture so I'm off to that right now let's see what it's about last time I stayed like more in this area this time I'm a lot more central this is a famous kabuki house the original capital of Japan and because this city has preserved Japanese traditional culture walking down the streets you still get that sense of like preservation and like an older style Japan this is like the romantic impression that a lot of foreigners have about visiting Japan is that they'll be seeing rustic architecture and wooden buildings and minimalism is exclusive, members only, high-end, and very famous. Getting into a tea house can be hard. A lot of them are members only. Some of these memberships have taken like generations to build. The only way for a foreigner to gain access to a tea house is to know a member and have them invite you over. But the thing is, they're risking a lot by doing that. So a lot of members guard their, their membership. This is a shrine to tea, which is planted on this ground. This is like matcha tea leaves. It doesn't have any smell. So the founder of this area, Kenji, brought matcha over from China to plant here because matcha, the tea itself, is made from crushed or pulverized leaves. And so when you're drinking the tea, you're actually drinking the actual leaf versus just steeping the matcha in, in a cup of hot water. That means you have more antioxidants as well as more caffeine. The reason why the founder brought matcha over here was because his monks were falling asleep. Matcha was a perfect way to wake them up. These lamps are like tea house lamps and if you see them, you might see geisha in this area. Gion, it's kind of like the town of the flower and the willow. The flower being the beautiful, young, and youthful Maiko, and then the willow, a geisha who has mastered the form of all these different arts. It is kind of hard to find geisha because usually they're almost always working. They only come out really at night. Sometimes you might catch a glimpse of them, but please be respectful. A lot of times they are on their way to work. No touching. This is an okia. You can see the name of the Okasan, the mother of the house, and the names of the Michael that she's taken in here. They all have a similar name which is given to them at a temple and this actually helps people to recognize what house that, that Michael is from. Here is another house right here. You can see again. Everyone has similar names. A Michael is like a younger apprentice of a geisha. And most Michaels are like around 15 or 16 years old. It's really hard to become an actual geisha because a lot of practice and skill goes into becoming one. There's also very strict rules of like no dating, no cell phones. You know, you're living in a world completely separate from society. 
some houses, the Casa might not take many micro just because it's a hefty investment. She needs anywhere from 30 kimonos to lessons for the next five years, and it can well range like over $5,000 a year. When they wear those shoes, they're really high, but when they walk, it creates a clunky experience so that it's very reminiscent of being like a little girl. Japan kind of, um, I guess, prizes is youth. There's a popular misconception that geisha sell sexual services and they don't. They are like artisans. They are people who have mastered several different arts from dance, playing music, to the art of conversation. All these things are what the geisha has mastered over time. So a popular thing you'll notice around town is a lot of people are dressed up in kimonos and they're not Japanese. They're actually renting kimono costumes for the day. You'll find many like rental places. You can easily ask your hotel uh, for them, but you'll, you'll find them. And you'll find even the men love doing this too. I heard there's something like six to seven hundred temples in Kyoto. Very easy to get templed out here. This is a mini shrine for love and a little bit of fertility too. Rabbits here in Japan have like a reputation <laughs> or have been symbolic of fertility. Finally, I have a shrine that's going to be popular with you ladies. This shrine is very popular with the Michael and the geisha that live in this area. That's because this shrine is dedicated to everlasting beauty. You make your prayer up there and then you come down by the fountain and you cup some of the water from it. Put it on your hands and then smooth it over your face and then you'll be blessed. I don't know, I feel like I want to bottle that up and take some home. <laughs> okay, we're in Yasaka Shrine right now and this is on our way to Maruyama Park. You can see like right now there's so many food vendors because there's this hamami celebration. This hamami celebration kind of gives everyone a reason to come out. It gives a reason for vendors to come out and sell some food. Kashimaki. This is kind of like a crepe, a seafood crepe. This one costs 400 yen. I guess the others cost 300 yen and I just picked the 400 one. It's got Japanese mayonnaise on it, green onions, and I think that's a konami yaki sauce. Let's see how good this is. Okay, this is a fairly heavy stick. It was bigger than I anticipated. I haven't had breakfast. This is my lunch. It should definitely fill me up. Mm. Okay. This is really good. Between the economy yaki sauce and the Japanese mayonnaise, oh my god, this is amazing. You can see right there, it's just really a pancake. And I want to say there's a little bit of seafood in it, I could be completely wrong. But the flour has got like flavor. There's a little bit of ginger and corn in this grape. I was wondering why it was called hashimaki. It's because there's chopsticks inside and you can use it to eat your maki roll. Roughly around four dollars to get this little bit of a meal. Today the crows are really out in full force. They must be happy about Hanami season two. It's actually quite legal to drink alcohol in the streets of Osaka. That's why you'll see the beers being sold here. Sake. Here you have Sakura Sake. Oh, look at those right there. Those. You've got the little Sakura blossom inside of it.
here I have a very interesting temple. It's small, it's tucked away, could be a little challenging to find. But this temple is for people that want to release bad luck, welcome in good luck, and are willing to do it in a slightly unique and colorful way. So basically inside these little balls here is like a symbolic monkey. What you would do is you would write your bad habit on the monkey, which is kind of like tied and bound inside the ball, kind of like keeping that little naughty mischievous thing from coming out. And then you would write on the outside your wish of what you want. You have this temple that's turned into kind of like a weird, funky, colorful art form. You can see at the shrine, all these balls wrapped up with all these bad habits people want to get rid of, as well as all the wishes that people want fulfilled. And here we are at Kodaiji Temple. This might be the last temple of my day. Paying the 600 yen admission fee will get you into the temple area where there's a lovely Zen type of garden. But I'll leave that to you guys. Right next to the Kodaji temple, you have like this tourist information booth. They kind of give you these maps where you can follow the path along the way and kind of rub the belly of some of these good fortune statues. On the back, it also tells you the meaning behind each of these statues. That's an interesting way to get around, especially if you're like a family or you have children, um, checking some of these off. Kyoto walking tours for showing me around and giving me this additional insight so that I could share this with you guys. You give what you feel the tour is worth, but obviously whatever they give you in that tour is a, worth a whole lot more than whatever you're probably giving. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Until then, travel safe, smart, and fun. May the girl be with you. Check out my Japan video playlist for more in-depth videos about these places and check back for more Girl Traveler videos where I take you inside my solo travel adventures. As always, links in the description box below. Until then, travel safe, smart, and fun, and may the girl be with you.